love to two Easter processional hymn is hymn 179 verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. Eucharist is right too, found on page 355 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and willingly magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. Good morning. The first lesson appointed for this morning is a, from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, You are Israelites. Listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freedom from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is my, at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I say to you confidently of our ancestor David that both he died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed this morning is Psalm 16. Let us read it together. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly who are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied, their libations of blood I will not offer nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who I uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest, I hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and is your right hand for pleasures evermore.
The second reading comes from the first epistle of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have to have suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Sequence hymn, hymn 209. the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the door of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the disciples, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands 
and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have come to believe. The second Sunday of Easter, the eighth day of the great 50 days of Easter, is for the faithful. And blessed are you who have come. You heard a lot of jokes on this Sunday. A low Sunday, bowling alley Sunday, the big letdown, the first sermon, by the way, the first sermon that you ever learn as a priest, when you're generally assisting somebody, it's the first one you learn because the rector is gone. <laughs> However, I've come to appreciate this Sunday because it is here and now that the truth is spoken. A Holy Week and Easter were, were spectacular. Monday, Thursday was glorious. It was the nicest family dinner that we have had since before COVID. What a joy it was to gather together as a Grace Church family and hear about that night in which Jesus gave us that great gift of Holy Communion and then to participate in it, in it ourselves. Good Friday was also very special. And Easter Sunday was magnificent. What a great day. I heard that over and over again. What a great day. Just about as good as what you get in the Russian Easters. An American visitor, a Christian, was in Russia one Easter. And she said the night before Easter Day, at the Easter Vigil, the Russian Orthodox patriarch retreated into one of the largest Orthodox churches and huge crowds gathered around. At midnight, Easter day, at midnight, someone knocked on the cathedral doors, and at that moment, the priest flung open the doors and a torch in his hand and a torch in the other hand and bellowed out, he is risen. And everybody answered back, he is risen indeed. This American visitor, said that it was at that moment, at that moment when in the heart of communist darkness that she heard all of the people who were forth risen indeed, she knew the whole thing was true. People didn't care it was communist. Jesus was risen and they all proclaimed it. And so this morning, as we gather to worship the risen Jesus, after the grand explosion of music, after the flowers, although we're pretty lucky, look at what we have here. And you're going to be invited to take these flowers home today, every one of you. After the full church, after the celebration, after the Easter egg hunt, after all of this comes the question we must each answer. Does the resurrection make a difference in your lives? Does it make any difference in your life or was it all show for one day? This is where the rubber of faith hits the hard road of reality. 
Or as one person noted, the measure of Easter is not in the beauty of the music or the glory of the flowers or the number of people, but rather in the measure that we allow God to transform our lives through the power of the resurrection. If Jesus' early disciples were any example at all, there is great hope for each and every one of us. Think about it. Immediately, when Jesus was taken and he was put on trial, what did the disciples do? Oh, they split. They split. Thank goodness for the women. And then, after the resurrection, who went to the tomb? It was the women. Were they believed? Heck no. Witness Peter. Peter, the one who promised that he would never leave Jesus' side. And yet he betrays them. All of them, save John, would die for their faith. All of them would be completely transformed. And John would be exiled to the island of Patmos. The gospel reading that we heard this morning is that evening. That evening, after everybody had heard the grand and glorious announcement, after everyone had heard, he is risen, some believed, some didn't, after the wonderful experience of Mary Magdalene, they were all in that upper room. They were all there. Use your imagination as to what they might have been thinking. Uh-oh. Is it to be believed? Is it nothing? Ten disciples were there. We were missing, of course, Judas. And Thomas wasn't around. They'd been Jesus' accomplices, and they could certainly be arrested. Maybe Jesus wasn't alive after all. They'd only seen the empty tomb. What does that mean? Maybe it was a figment of their imaginations. Had they been gullible to believe in the Messiah? And yet on the other hand, what if it really was true? What if Jesus was alive? What would he think of them? The ones that had been so fickle that they couldn't even stay with Jesus. Doubt. Doubt permeated the room. And then Jesus appeared to them and said, peace be with you. Then he said it again. And in those four words, Jesus met all of their doubts, all of their fears, all their faithlessness. He breathed on them, empowering them with the Holy Spirit, and commissioned them. It was as if he said, I still love you. I still trust you, and I'm empowering you to go out on a mission. Well, poor Thomas wasn't there. Poor Thomas. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he told everybody, I'm not going to believe unless I can do this, and this, and this. And when Jesus appeared to him, he fell to his knees and said, my Lord and my God. Each one of these disciples was utterly transformed. Peter would go on and give the sermon of his life. You heard that in the Acts of the Apostles, telling all of his Jewish brethren, look, this was promised from before. Look what David says in the Psalms. Look, he promises that Jesus is arrested. And Jesus was resurrected because we were there. And he gave us that, the sermon of his life. A little bit later, he would write this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Living hope. Hope of the resurrection. And that's the hope that we have today. Are there doubts? Do you have doubts? All right, fess up. I have doubts. When we hear these stories and we wonder, and we hear the wonderful promise of eternal life, don't you wonder? 
The truth is, doubts are a part of our faith. Doubts are a part of it. We do not hear about any doubts from Caiaphas or the high priests or the chief priests. Oh, we hear of doubts from Pilate, but they're a little kind of different doubts. Oh, my wife told me I shouldn't get involved in this, and he washed his hands. We don't hear of their doubts, though. Nor do we hear of the doubts of atheists. You know, sometimes it must be wonderful to be an atheist because you know for sure that God doesn't exist. No questions asked. They have no doubts. It didn't exist. But can you live like that? Can you live as they tell you you're nothing but an insignificant speck on the world's planet? And your life came about as chance? As the world just went big, big bang, string theory? Or do you believe that you are a beloved child of God? And that God created each one of you uniquely. And you have a special place in this world. Oh, it may have been the Big Bang Theory or the String Theory. But God is the author of all of that. Science can prove a lot of things. Science can talk about the world being far more than 5,000 years old. Science cannot tell us the author of creation out of nothing. So we hear no doubts from the atheists. We hear no doubts from the apathetic because they don't care. Doubts belong to the faithful. Doubts belong to people that are searching. Doubts belong to people of hope because you can't have hope unless you have doubts, unless you question. Back when I was in seminary, I had the opportunity to write a paper, and the professor was saying, OK, I want you to write a paper on proof of the resurrection. And he suggested that I look at some of the ones that um, debunk it. And I went on this long journey of reading a lot of different books. There were some people that said, oh, Jesus didn't really die. He was faking it. When he was on the cross, he just fainted. He never really died. There's this wound theory. There's a theory that the disciples stole the body of Christ and had some kind of mystical experience. We even have authors today like Marcus Borg, uh, John Spong. But they say nothing. The greatest proof of the resurrection has to be the church itself. The fact that the disciples and hundreds of them afterwards and then thousands and millions gave their life for the sake of the gospel the best proof of the resurrection that we have is the existence of the church. Faith, doubt, they go with it. Those gifts that Jesus gave the disciple of peace, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, of commissioning, those are our gifts, too. What more wonderful gift can you think of than the gift of forgiveness? The church, given the power to unbind, to loose, to free, without forgiveness, we hold each other bound. Without forgiveness, we are not free. There's a story of Leonardo da Vinci he was working on the painting of the Last Supper. And he'd been very, very angry at a friend. He'd lost his temper. He'd said some words that were kind of ugly and vicious. Wished he could take them back. And as he was working on it, he was painting the face of Jesus, and he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Until he went to his friend, sought forgiveness and reconciliation, and then went back. Only then was he at peace. We all know the power of forgiveness and the chains of unforgiveness, as we know the joy of reconciliation and the pain of separation and anxiety. What the resurrection offers us, what Jesus offers us, is peace. And today, after the Sunday of the resurrection, Jesus says, peace be with you. Peace that meets us in our fears, our doubts, our faithlessness. Peace that we offer each other. Every Sunday, 
When we gather, we kneel or there. We offer our confession. We seek forgiveness, absolution, and then comes the peace. The peace is not coffee out. The peace is extending that gift of reconciliation, that gift of peace to one another. For you never know the person who is unable to forgive himself or herself. And you're offering that gift. That is a gift of the resurrection. It's our choice as to how we live. Do we get stuck in the upper room, whimpering in fear and waiting for the next Easter? Or do we come out, as the disciples eventually did, come out in power to live in the joy of the resurrection? Commissioned to carry on the mission of good news as a community of faith bound together by the love of God, as a community that experiences the risen Christ in worship, as we share in the breaking of bread and the wine, as we open scripture, as we serve in his name, as we hope and pray for one another, as we care for one another. That's the joy we have. As we proclaim each and every Sunday, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We remember the gifts and live in the gifts of the resurrection. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and join with me in saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world to come. The prayers of the people appointed today are found in your bulletin or in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those on our parish prayer list. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, 
that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to greet one another with the peace. Good morning and welcome to everyone. And good morning to you who are watching us online. Your announcements for all you faithful ones, your announcements are in the back of the bulletin. Uh, please remember that we have a vestry meeting on Tuesday. You all should already have received the financials. If you didn't, let me know and I will send you the rest of it um, tomorrow or today. So uh, the meeting will be 7.30 in the choir room. We will offer a Zoom for those that cannot come. Um, this is an important vestry meeting. Uh, adopt a lunch is next Sunday. Um, there is a sign-up sheet in the back for food items needed. I haven't checked it recently, but that is in the back. And next Sunday, um, after the 10 o'clock service, will be the packing of that lunch. Mayor's Prayer Breakfast. Probably haven't heard of it in a while. Uh, the date got moved to um, April, and that was all a part of what happened uh, with COVID, but more importantly, it's what happened with the elections for the city of Glendora. Instead of having elections on, uh, I think it was what, March or something like that, all by itself, they moved the elections to be along with the rest of our elections in June or November. So we moved the Mayor's Prayer Breakfast as well. It is Wednesday, April 26th. The bell choir is playing. 
Um, we, we practiced on you last Sunday. Um, the, the bell choir will be playing. Uh, Nancy's doing all of the graphics and the flower work. Uh, tickets are $25, and we invite all of you to come to me after the service, so I write it down, <laughs> um, and I can purchase, I can uh, get tickets for you. It begins at oh dark 30, it does begin at seven o'clock in the morning, but we do invite you to come to that. Uh, oh, she just said the quartet, yes, the bells are playing, that's what, I, that's what I mean, we practiced on you on Sunday. We have more to do, and so we do hope that you will come to that. It's one of those opportunities that you don't find a lot in, in secular world. Um, this is sponsored by the Glendora Ministerial Association, very clear, it's not a government thing. Uh, but the mayor's prayer breakfast is a time to gather as a community, to pray as a community, to enjoy a very good breakfast at the country club, um, to hear music. And so I hope you'll be interested in that. Again, you can come to me if you would like tickets for that. Bible study, slight change, will start on the 26th at 10 a.m. Um, and finally, you see all these flowers around here? They're beautiful. They're beautiful. And Nancy refreshed them. So, we want you to take them. If you want this, for instance, can't take the yellow thing, but lift up like that. Nancy says she'll give you a plastic bag if we can. Okay. But anyway, take them. Take them. Take them. Take them. Take them. There. There. They'll be dividing them up for you, the larger ones. The smaller ones like this, there and there, just take them. No? Yeah, but those, that's already broken down. That's already broken down. The big ones, they will break down. You, you can't just come up and, and pick the big one up. Um, you have to share. Okay? You have to share. But... But it's low Sunday, so look at, how, look at how much you get, okay? But you still have to share. I think that's it. Mayor's Prayer Breakfast is Wednesday, April 26th. What do they have for breakfast? Okay. The usual. Um, they have eggs. They have scrambled eggs. They have bacon, sausage, sweet rolls. Um, juices, fruit. <laughs> if you pay for it, yes. <laughs> yes. The, you, bar's the bar's open. We'll, we'll all be there, and, and you can get there early. Because I, I was given this, I was given this lovely commandment. Oh, the person who was going to play piano died. You're now playing piano beginning at 6.30 in the morning. So, um, you can get breakfast beginning at 6.45, and you can have your Bloody Mary. You can, breakfast starts at 6.45. I know. Okay. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or other thank offerings? Marcia needed some encouragement. It's not your birthday, is it, Kim? Okay. I want you to notice Kim walking after major back surgery. Two inches taller because she's not walking like this. Well, you were shy. Okay. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart may thy peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Kim, we offer thanks in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We offer many, many thanks for God's healing and God's continued healing so that you will be running down this aisle <laughs> at some point. Many blessings, continued healing. And Marcia, is it your birthday? birthday? Okay, it really is. May God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and strengthen you. May he uphold you. May you know his love for you this day and always. Happy birthday. Thank you. Amen. All right.
Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy healing. Continued healings. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice unto God. Oh, there are Easter pictures in the back. Go ahead and take them if you're in them.
this one. up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is a true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you have made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask of your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, on honor and glory as yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Recessional Hamel 193.